Hi, it's Rob from the Russian Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to paint up one of the sisters' Repentia. So the first colour that we're going to use is Vallejo Black. I'm going to use this to paint up the clothing that the sister Repentia is wearing, and also the main part of the chainsword. You can see here I'm not being too careful with the brush when I'm painting this on. I'm using a really, really old Citadel medium layer brush to paint this. So it does overlap onto the other areas, but since it's the first colour, it doesn't really matter because we can paint over that. So we'll come back once we finish the black and onto the next colour. Which is going to be Vallejo Burnt Umber. I'm going to use this to do the skin. I do like using this as quite a nice base for black skin. Obviously there's a variety of different shades of every kind of skin that you can do for these. But there's a tutorial which I'll link below of how I did this skin on one of the Primaris Marines. But I do like this as a nice base colour. So you can see here that we've got the skin colour finished and we've also got the clothing finished and the chainsaw. Next up we're going to be using Citadel Ricard Flesh. I'm going to be using this to do all the scroll work and the parchments which are run down in front and also there's a couple of little seals, there's one on the front there and two little bits of parchment coming down from the metal work behind her head. So we're going to give these a nice coat of Citadel Ricard Flesh. Now when you're painting this on, whether you've used a black undercoat or a red undercoat, you'll probably find that you need to do two coats of it because the Ricard flesh comes out a little bit of streaky. So another coat of it won't do any harm, it'll get it nice and smooth, give you that smooth base colour. Next up we're going to be using Citadel Lead Belcher. We're going to be using this for the chains and the tassels and the teeth on the chainsword. Basically, whereas I'd be using the Model Air Chrome on the normal Sisters of Battle so that they've got the nice gleaming kind of metal, I like to think that the Repentures wouldn't be getting the best stuff they can get, so it's uh, a little bit dirty, a little bit more grubby. Not up to the standard that the normal Sisters will be using. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. We're just going to be using this to do the fleur de lis and the sockets which they have on the skin. These sockets are obviously where they plug into the power armour. Since they're not using that anymore, I figured that the sockets would still be there and still be well maintained. And then all the fleur de lis which they have on the armour and all the decorations and things, I thought they'd keep them in good condition or use good quality stuff for them because of their symbol. Now we're going to go on to a little bit of Citadel Retributor armour. We're going to use this to do the detail on the chainsword. So you've got the guard and the skull at the end of the hilt. We're also going to use it to do the metal bars behind the head. The tiny fleur de Leon. And also, you've got the kind of clamps that she's got on her thighs, which seem to dig into the skin. We're going to do them in gold as well. Next up, we're going to be using a little bit of Vallejo white to paint her hair. I've left half the hair black there, and we're going to paint the other half, the longer half, in white. So it fits in with the rest of the Sisters of Repentia, and the other Sisters of Battle, who I'm doing with white hair. I figured that in shaving off half the hair, they've left part of it white, and the other half will be her natural hair colour. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Word Bearer's Red. 
I'm going to use this just to do the purity seal, which is on her front there. And also the handle of her chainsword. You can also do the inside of her mouth with the same colour as well. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Beige Brown just to do the strap which is going around her neck there. You can see me struggling to get the paint on here, it's because I failed to shake the bottle well enough. It came out a little bit too thin. Now you're going to use a little bit more Vallejo Model Air Chrome. You can use this just to do the little buckle on that strap there. And then this little metal bracket to tidy up any bits of the Retrovisor armour to be smudged on there. And then a little fleur de lis on each shoe. Now we're going to move on to Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. We're going to be using this just to do the rubble. Now you can obviously do this any colour that you want, whatever colour you're working on. It actually looks like the old red clay bricks that you get in the terraced houses in the UK. Well, that's what my house is made of anyway. But I'm going to be doing these all grey on all the miniatures of paint just because it fits in with the rest of the base that I've been doing for like the Black Legion and the Prime Artist as well. Moving on to the shades now, we're going to be using Citadel Null Oil. I'm going to use this on all the silvery metallics, so the Model Air Chrome and the Lead Belcher. We're also going to use it on the sister's skin. Which will darken up those recesses. We'll come back and we'll have that done. Next up is a little bit of Citadel Seraphim Sepia. We're going to be using this on all of the parchments and the scrolls. Moving on to Citadel Grax Earth Shade now. We're going to be using this on all of the gold. I do think the Sisters of Battle miniatures that have come out recently are absolutely stunning. They've got so much detail on them and the posing is really good as well. It's like all the other miniatures that they've brought out in the past couple of years. They've managed to get poses really dynamic, make people look like they're charging into combat or bracing the weapon properly to shoot and every one of the sisters of battle so far is doing similar now we're going to use some citadel Drucci violet for the purity seal and also make sure that you put it on the handle of the chainsword which i fail to do next up we're going to use some pale gray wash from vallejo we're going to use this on the white of her hair and like on saint celestine the way i wanted to keep that as pure white as possible for all the white parts. I'm doing the same with the Sisters of Battle in terms of their shoulder pads and also the white hair so that it does look as bright as it possibly can do. Now we're going to start working back on the skin. So we're going to be using Vallejo Burnt Umber once more. Failed to show the paint here. But it is Burnt Umber that we're reapplying. You're making sure you're leaving the null oil in the recesses. So you're picking up all that detail. I'm using a army painter war game, a character brush to paint up the face here because there is a lot of detail in there and I'm trying to avoid painting over it.
Now that we've finished that layer, we're going to mix a little bit of Mornfang Brown with the Burnt Umber. I'm going to start to highlight the skin. We come back and move on to the next highlight. With that layer done, we're now going to add a little bit more Mornfang Brown to the previous mix. And we'll just add another layer of highlights to the skin. Now you don't want to be adding this all over, you just want to be adding it to the areas that are going to catch the light a bit more. And keep that smooth so that you can see the two previous layers underneath it and also leaving the shade in there now this layer is just for those of you who are following this to the letter because I missed the Drucci Violet off the hilt of the chainsaw I'm just going to add the Drucci Violet to it now just to shade that red bit And add a little bit more to the purity seal as well. Like so. Now I'm going to go to Vallejo Black. I'm going to start working on her clothing. So all I'm doing here is colouring in any bits of the hair that I've got other colours on and any bits of the clothing which have got other colours on. Just so that's nice and tidy for when we start doing the highlighting in a moment. Nicely off camera there. We are still working just on that black. Next up we're going to highlight that with Vallejo German Grey. I'm going to use this just on the areas that will be catching the light. Some good creases within the material of the clothing. And also some good details on the hair and the wristbands and that. So you can get some nice highlights on there. Like so. Next up, Mechanicus Standard Grey from Citadel. And we're just going to do the extreme highlights on the clothing on the hair. So that's with the grey done. Now we're going to start working on the gold again. So using Citadel Retributor Armour to add the gold colouring back to it. Making sure that you leave the Agraxair shade in the recesses. You can do any kind of gold on here really. Doesn't matter too much, but this is just my standard gold colour that I tend to use for everything. I like the shine that it gives once it's all finished. So now I'm going to highlight all the gold with Citadel Liberator Gold. So you want to be thinking about where the light is going to be catching all the different areas of gold on this. If the light's shining down from above. That's generally the rule of thumb that I use when I'm highlighting gold. Thinking about where it might reflect from and 
where the light's going to catch it and that kind of thing. Next we're going to be using Vallejo Model Air Chrome. We're going to add this to the Liberator Gold just to lighten that and then we're going to use this to do one extreme highlight on all the golden areas. Now this is a really nice colour when you've mixed it together. The chrome really lightens up the Liberator Gold so it gives it good shine on the edges and on any surfaces that you put it on. So just highlight all the areas where you think the light will be catching it on the edges and that kind of area. And once you're happy, move on to the next stage. Next up we're going to be using Citadel Rekfast Flesh. I'm going to use this to recolor in the scrolls and the purity seals. On this part here I'm using a Citadel Medium Layer Brush because they have a pretty good point on them. You want to be leaving some of that sepia in the recesses, not too much, but enough that you can still see the darkened areas where it'd be shaded. Next we're going to add some Vallejo White to the Rakarth Flesh. We're just going to start highlighting the scroll works. So you're going to be catching all the areas where it's going to be catching the light. Just highlight those edges. Making sure you leave some of the Ricard flesh there, and obviously some of the sepia in the recesses. Because the areas in this scroll are quite big, you can do quite a bit of highlighting on these. Just carry on with the scroll up the chest, and the two little ones on the back as well. Next we're adding a little bit more white to the mix. We're just going to do one extreme highlight on the parchment. So this is generally going to be on the top edges of it and on the edges that are running vertically around it if there is. The top edges of any ridges on the parchment themselves. Next up we're just going to use some pure white from Vallejo. We're going to start working on the hair and adding that pure white back onto it. So you can see the pale grey wash from Vallejo it does work really well when you're doing this white hair because it shades it enough that you can see it but not enough that it darkens it too much so you can paint over it easily with the white and it'll just leave those details showing through because it's sat there in the recesses. Also, before you put the white away, you're going to be doing the whites of the eyes as well. Next up, we're going to be using Vallejo Model Air Chrome. We're going to be highlighting all the studs and the different parts that we used the Model Air Chrome on earlier. Just giving them a bit more colour. like so. Now we're using Vallejo Black. We're going to be using this to do the pupil of her eye. Now I'm getting her looking slightly to the right as though she's looking where she's going to be chopping that two-handed chainsaw. So that is going to be swinging down to her lower right side. So I'm making the eyes look as though she's looking at the chest of whoever she's about to chop in half. Now to decorate the scrolls we're going to use Citadel Caro Bear Crimson. I'm just going to add some lines and shapes and symbols. Like a rough Aquila there. And then a rough Fleur de Lis. Just there so that'll be on the section of parchment on her torso. Now we're just going to add some horizontal lines so there's text going on there. Also add 
some of the large squares with the bigger letters in that you get in uh, old manuscripts and that kind of thing. Now I'm going to use some Vallejo black. We're going to do the scroll work on one of the parchments on the back and also the smaller one on the front. So there's some horizontal lines on these ones though, nothing too special. Like so. Next up, I'm going to use some Citadel Corn Red. I'm going to highlight the purity seal there. Now we're going to do one final highlight on the purity seal using Citadel Wasdacher Red. I think it's a great colour for highlighting wax. Or the wax that you get on seals or red candles. It just looks like when it's been burnt and it's a little bit paler than the rest. Now we're going to use Citadel Dry Paint Necron Compound. I'm just going to lightly brush this over all the silver metallics to give them a nice shiny edge. I do quite like this Necron compound because it does stick to the edges and the ridges on the metals and give them a nice, really kind of clean shine. So it's been worn away. So I do quite like the dry paint. Now we're going to use Citadel Technical Paint, Blood for the Blood God. And all we're going to do is use some vertical lines running down from where these little hooked fleur de lis go into the leg working on it so that where you've got the creases in the knee the blood would be going into that crease and spreading where it's getting squashed then running down a bit further i'm doing the same thing where these things are piercing the skin as well a little bit of blood around and then blood streaks going straight down And I think a little bit of Caraberg Crimson just under the eyes and into the edges of the mouth too. Like so. Now we're going to use a little bit more Vallejo Modeler Chrome. I'm just going to use this to do some of the little studs that are on the skin next to all of the sockets. Like so. So the final thing we're going to do is a few little scars and to do that we're going to be using Vallejo Burnt Umber which is the standard skin tone that we've been using. Then we're also going to mix some of that with Wasdaka Red from Citadel and also some of the Burnt Umber we're going to mix with black just to make two different colours for the scars. Now I've been looking at scars to do this um, sometimes they heal darker sometimes they heal a little bit with a pinkish colour to it so I thought I'll do a couple of examples of each on this miniature. Then you can go with whichever you prefer. The lighter coloured ones there. After doing two of the darker ones on the calf of the left leg. And with that, that is the finished Sister Repentia. They're all slightly different, they've all got different details to them, so there is a lot of variation in them. But this is just how I'm doing the standard kind of paint jobs for them. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media, link below. Thanks very much.